Okay, welcome to uh, the second part of lecture 6.2. This is a continuation from what I was doing on the Jamboard in lecture 6.1 and solving ordinary differential equations. Just want to illustrate that we can also do that in Haskell. So here I'm uh, starting from an equation saying that the second derivative of f plus two times the first derivative plus f should be equal to the function sinus. And its starting point is 2, and its derivative starting point is 1. And the steps we need to do to do this solution using power series is to first transform the 2 to the power series representation with the specification that f should be the evaluation of as. So this is a function we can't really implement in Haskell because it would be an evaluation with infinite accuracy, but uh, conceptually f is the result of the full power series infinite list as f prime is as prime and f double prime is as double prime so clearly these three variables uh, f f prime f double prime uh, are not unrelated and similarly the three lists are not unrelated uh, so then we also need to uh, transform correspondingly the right hand side the sort of source term the function there which is now sinus and we assume that we got a representation for that called sin p here. And I will implement that. So first step, compute the terms for the right-hand side. Now, if the right-hand side had been a constant 1 or 0 or something like that, that would have been trivial. But here we actually do I need to do a little bit of work. So it is good exercise. So how do we specify sine? Well, we can say it's the integral starting from 0, which is sine of 0, uh, of its derivative. So derivative of sine is cosine. So we need a cosine p, which means that we should actually introduce two functions at the same time here. So mutually recursively with sine, we introduce cosine. And that's also the integral, this time starting at 1. So the cosine of 0 is 1. And then with minus sine p. So let's see uh, <clears throat> if we load this one and take, let's say, five first term of sin p. And if we also ask that to be a polynomial of rationals, rational coefficients, and we can see it's 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 6, and so on. Seems correct. And uh, as they're defined together with cosine, we can also check the cosine coefficients. Whoops, if I spell it correctly. Let's hide this. Um, cosine. Whoops, searching. Okay. And that's then 1, 0, minus half, 0, 1, 24, and so on. Okay, so now we have the coefficients for the right hand side. Then we can move on to the next step solve for the highest derivative. So solving for the highest derivative, well, if I take the first equation here, uh, we just need to subtract everything else to so get f, the second derivative on the left-hand side. So then we subtract f and we subtract two times f prime. So basically this is what we want, but then we also should move to the transformed space of the power series. So f double primes represented by as. So here we got sin p and then subtract as and subtract, well, actually two times that's a scaling. So scale p of as prime. So this is now step by step conforming just to the equation of scale p2 as prime. So this is two times f prime. Okay, uh, I didn't put this as source code, so of course it was still typed correct. Um, let's check. Okay, now we got an equation for one of them, but this depends on AS prime. Well, then the next step here is to fill in uh, the integ equations for all the other derivatives. So we, we use the one equation we've got to express the highest derivative, and then we just express the others in the sort of a trivial way saying that as prime that's the integral of well starting at 
the function f's uh, prime's value at zero and the integration of as double prime. But what is f prime at zero? Well, we know that. The equation up here says that's one. So this should integrate starting from one as prime. Uh, let's just check, yeah. And then similarly, we should integrate uh, as prime starting from the function value at zero. And the function value at zero, that's defined up here to be two. So let's just put in two instead. Okay, as one, as prime, it should be. Yes, okay. So now I've got three equations for the three unknowns here, and I've inserted the initial conditions in the correct positions. So then, uh, now if we would do this by hand, we would start filling in coefficients. And I'll uh, not do uh, much of that here, but a little bit just to illustrate. So what we normally do is that we know um, when these are defined as the integral, that the first coefficient that come out, comes out is the constant term. So this is one followed by something, this is two followed by something, and then we start computing the as double prime using this equation. And actually we can simultaneously fill in sine p here, uh, which is then a zero first, and also cosine p, which is a one followed by, and so on. So the first as double prime here, we have to satisfy this equation, and that's done pointwise. Subtraction here and scaling is just doing that on each coefficient. So if we write it up, it's the sine, that's the zero from up here, minus, and then the as, that was a two, minus two times, that's the scaling, the value of as prime, which is one. So this is the first value of the as prime. Actually, we can compute this. So zero minus two is minus two. Two times one is two minus two minus two is minus four. Okay, so the whole series here starts with, uh, all, all of these three series have now got the first term. And then we know that we can compute the next term using the integ equation. For example, we can start from below. So this one says, we should divide this sequence by one, two, and so on. So the, the first one here goes down diagonally, one divided by one, which I'll just write as one. And here we take the minus four and divide that by one, which is just a minus four. Um, and let's bend them a little bit to make it more visible. Um, and actually we can move one further step here because we know as prime meaning we can integrate this to minus four divided by two, which is then minus two. Okay, um, similarly, if we want to go further from here, then we have to also take the next term of sine p. Remember sine p here is the integral of cosine. So it's, the, it's this one from cosine divided by one. So this is also one. And similarly, Actually, the cosine is divided as minus zero divided by one, so minus zero, which is zero, and so on. This, uh, I mean, these should just continue. So if you want to compute more terms, then we can take again this AS, uh, um, this equation saying, well, it's sine P, which here is one minus AS, which is that below, that's one minus two times as prime, which is minus four. So this is one minus one is zero, minus two times minus four is plus eight. Okay, doing arithmetic is always difficult. So let's see if the computer agrees with us. So we can take the first five terms of as, for example, and it says two, one, minus two, and then actually we can ask for it to be a rational polynomial. This is uh, two, one, minus two, four thirds, minus a half. Seems uh, to correspond so far to these. And let's check also what it tells us for AS prime. 
uh, it's 1 minus 4, 4. Well, we only seen the two first there. And my AS second derivative. Minus 4, 8, minus 6. So minus 4, 8 seems to correspond here. And we can also, of course, uh, check that we got sine of uh, poly rational 0, 1, and cosine starts with 1, 0. OK, so in, in this way, one can go about extending this by hand step by step. And that's what you will have to do in the exam. But now, with the definition in Haskell, these will actually be infinite lists, and you can ask for as many elements as you like. Which also means that the fifth step, which is usually checking that you got the things right, um, can here be done on approximations from the left and right hand side. So the left hand side of the equation, if we show the equation back up there, so it said solve that equation. Uh, so the left hand side. Uh, is f double prime plus 2 times f prime plus f. Notice I'm, I'm computing with functions here. And um, f, f prime and f double prime are all calls to eval ps with for n terms, because I can't do it for infinitely many terms. And the right hand side is this corresponding cutoff after n terms of the sine function. And then I, uh, so now I can compute what the left hand side after 10 terms is. Well, it's a function, so I need to apply it, say, to 1. So the input is 1. Then I get this value, and the right-hand side correspondingly computed is, well, very similar. So the test ek here is actually subtracting uh, the left-hand side from the right-hand side. So that's, uh, well, 1 to the power of minus 16, roughly, in the error. So that seems to... Uh, work out nicely. And uh, we don't really know now ad, um, a sort of algebraic expression for what the function should be. We only know its power series. So we don't really have a transform back. But uh, we will get to transforming and transforming back uh, in the Laplace uh, chapter, Laplace transforms chapter. OK, to sum up, uh, if you want to solve one of these equations, transform to power series, I mean, using power series then, uh, transform to power series, um, compute terms for the right hand side. In this case, it was trivial. And uh, no, it, in this case, it actually involved this recursive equation sine p cos p. What I want to say is sometimes it's trivial when it's just a constant, but you have to be careful there as well. And then um, solve for the highest derivative express it in terms of the power series, use scaling if multiplication is used, um, fill in the integ equations. So these are uh, always the same kind, starting value and its derivative, starting value and its derivative. And then you can start with a sort of hand computation or ask Haskell to produce, produce the terms for you. Um, I should mention that sometimes people uh, get the right hand side wrong when it's a simpler function. So if the equation from the start, let's put it down here, if the equation would have been say f prime plus f equals 1, then there is a tendency, some people will say, okay, well 1, that means that the right hand side as a power series is 1, 1, 1, 1, but that is not correct. Because 1, 1, 1, 1 would mean 1 plus x plus x squared plus um, x to the power of 3 and so on. So do remember that if it's just a constant here, then the list, uh, so this is not right hand side, because eval of not right hand side of x would be equal to this. The correct right hand side would be 1 followed by 0, 0, 0, 0, and so on. So the first equation, when, when solving this by hand, is different from the others because here you, you use a 1 and for the rest of the coefficients you use a 0. So that is something rather common error. Okay, and um, that was all for this part.